Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains and to the formal languages part of the discrete mathematics course at Cambridge. In this very short video, we go through a Cambridge Computer Science Tripos exam question issued in 2009, and we see that you can solve it completely using the simple concepts we saw last time. Just to prove how easy all that stuff is, with what we've done in barely half an hour of the first lecture, at least on my part, uh, you are already able to uh, do an exam question. This is an exam question that was issued in the year of our Lord 2009, paper two, which you're doing, question five, discrete mathematics two, look, two, already very advanced. My part is advanced. You can do this question already with what we've done. The set S of strings over symbols A and B is defined to be the least set of strings such as that A is in S, AS is in S if S is in S, if small s is in big S, BST is in S if S is in S and T is in S. So S and T are the syntactic variables, A and B are the symbols of the alphabet. So that's the premise. Uh, then sub-question A for five marks. Who wants five marks? The set S may also be described as the least subset of strings closed under certain rules. Describe the rules. Write down a principle of rule induction appropriate for the set S. You can do that with your eyes closed now, right? Okay. So A is in the uh, set, so that's an axiom. AS is in S if S is in S, so if S is in S, AS is in S, and uh, BST is in S if S is in S and T is in S. There you go, five marks, just like that. What else do you want? Isn't that uh, an easy um, way to earn five marks? For sub-question B, exhibit a derivation indicating which rules are used to show that the string a, A, B, B, A, A, A is in S. And here you just have some fun to say, well, to generate this, I must have used, which one do you think you might have used? Well, I've added an A, so I probably used, well, let's number these things, 0, 1, 2. Uh, I probably used this one from something that must have been the same without the A. A, B, B, A, A, A and something else to generate this one, and so on. And you do that, and you earn yourself another four marks. Then the next part, five marks, for a string S, let N A of S, my still on screen, uh, denote the number of occurrences of A in S. And similarly, let N B of S denote the number of occurrences of B. Proof for every string S in big S, that N A of S is greater than N B of S, i.e. there are strictly more occurrences of A than occurrences of B. And this is something that you do uh, by applying the theorem we just saw, uh, rule induction on uh, this, um, or these rules with the property of having uh, strictly more A's than B's. And it's true for the axiom. And if, if it was true for S, then adding one more A certainly makes it even more true. And if it was true for S and it was true for T, uh, when you combine them together, uh, then you have added one more B, but these ones both had an, at least one more A than B, and so in total, uh, even if this compensates for one, that's still the one from the other one, and so yes, you can do the proof by rule induction and say that's that, and you get yourself another five marks. And the rest of the question, you would get the remaining six marks by exhibit a string that has strictly more occurrences of A than occurrences of B, and yet is not in S. So that's just to prove the fact that uh, in that theorem, I, the inductively defined subset, was included in S, in a set that was closed under the, um, the rules, but it was not necessarily uh, equal to it. So it, it was the smallest such subset. It's the smallest one that's closed, but you could have bigger ones that are also closed. And so the bigger one is the one that ha enjoys this property, and there are things that enjoy this property but are not derived uh, from this and um, 
Once you think about it for a while, then in the first two or three minutes, you will find yourself an example which will be worth very many six marks to you, and then you can just go home uh, with 20 marks in the pocket. <laughs>